Hello and welcome to the Taskmaster podcast. It's Ed Gamble here. I'm the host of said podcast, which is why I'm introducing it. We talk about Taskmaster every week and we break down a particular episode. We go through it task by task. We chat about it, etc. You know the score by now. At the moment, we're talking about Taskmaster Series 12, which is going out on television at the moment. So hopefully you have watched Taskmaster Series 12, Episode 3, because that is the one we'll be talking about today with the wonderful guest, Desiree Birch, who is on the series. She's on the episode we're talking about. It all makes so much sense. What a wonderful coincidence. But before we get stuck into that episode, I'm excited to tell you about the new official Taskmaster app. I have got it. It's a good app. It's jam-packed. It's a Taskmaster extravaganza. Uh, Basically, it's like a show companion. You can watch along and, you know, score along at home. You know, we like to do that here on the Taskmaster podcast. We like to say, maybe that that should have got more points. Maybe that should have got less points. Basically challenging Greg secretly and hoping he doesn't hear because he'll be very, very angry if he does. And there's quizzes. There's tasks for you to do yourself. Uh, You can do them alone. You can do them with groups. And there's all the music from the show. It's a definitive Taskmaster app. Check it out at taskmaster.tv. Get involved. You'll also know that Series 12 of Taskmaster is on Channel 4 every Thursday at 9pm. You should know that because, yes, you've watched this episode that we're about to talk about. If you haven't, go and find it on all four. But make sure, tune in live. Get involved in the conversation. Thursday at 9pm on Channel 4. Okay, here we go. Let's talk Taskmaster Series 12, Episode 3 with the wonderful Desiree Birch. Welcome, Desiree, to the Taskmaster podcast. Hello. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, well, thank you for coming on. It's such a joy. Uh, you are our first Series 12 competitor uh, to come on the Taskmaster podcast to chat about Series 12. This We're is very right. excited to have you here. Yes, yeah. yes. And Good we- choice. I think so. I <laughs> yeah. think the only choice. I think you're yeah. the only choice for first, I think. Yeah, um, sure. I mean, you mainly, I think, potentially had some of my highlights from episode one. So it felt like we should uh, get get stuck into chatting about that fairly soon. Let's do it. But there's there's some other there's some other questions I want to ask you about okay. your time on Taskmaster. Yeah. A, did you enjoy your time on Taskmaster? I had I utterly I had the time of my life doing that show. It was such a just dream of a gig, a particularly coming as it did in the um dark night of the soul of the pandemic <laughs> to be able to leave my house and do like at least five or six totally new things when we were shooting those vts i had no idea just show up and be was such a gift that i feel so fortunate to have had during that time for sure and just in general yeah i think what's interesting about all of that is that um, a lot of people talked about during lockdown and during the pandemic that we we were all having the same time so we were all shut up in our houses there's nothing for us to do you potentially had the one of the most unique pandemics in the entire world. Yes, it was same day, same day, same day. Completely yeah. bonkers day. <laughs> I don't know how to understand. Car ride home, same day, same day, same day, same day. So uh, yeah, I just, I can't express enough. If you have the chance, if you're in the middle of a lockdown again, because who knows what the future holds, definitely go on, I don't know, the Taskmaster app, use the book, just give yourself a completely, utterly random day. It is possible to do outside without anyone or at least staying a, a, a broom handles length apart. While you're yeah, doing things. I think I think it comes under the uh, banner of key work, uh, I believe. Yes. So people yeah, yeah, going yeah. out there, there were there were nurses and doctors, obviously, uh, and delivery drivers working during the pandemic. And then you were also allowed to go to uh, a deconsecrated church and, and copy a man. Yes, because I, the people needed that at the time. Uh, we, we need to applaud the NHS. But then the other 23 hours of the day, what do we do with our hands? We applaud yes. Taskmaster <laughs> because people are exactly. out there doing stupidness. <laughs> well, look, I was out there clapping for carers, but then every other Thursday I was uh, clapping you doing your tasks secretly. That's Thank what you. I was doing Just... it for. Yeah. <laughs> On you, you can feel it. That's what happens yeah. to winners. They get the task <laughs> signal in the sky and they're like. <laughs> <laughs> um, were, you, were you a fan of the show beforehand or were you, were you going in blind, so to speak? I went in pretty blind. I was aware of the show and I was I, I was aware of the show in terms of being a comedian here where I was aware that it was a huge flipping deal um, yeah. and that you definitely want to be on it. And uh, it was a sort of like, and they give you tasks and you're like, okay, great. Uh, I mean, in on one hand, it felt very sort of um, 
familiar because it harkened back to all of my experimental theater days, you know, of just sort of like task based theater, like you go and you show up and somebody's created a thing and you try to do the thing. So that to me felt very close to um, a fun place. However, I feel like in retrospect, I would love to have like boned up a lot more <laughs> on like strategy. Do you know what I mean? Because there's definitely sure. more like now that I understand it, I was like, oh, I'm sure that there are millions of fans who are just like, oh, just give me one chance to do this. I know exactly how to do it. Whereas I was just like, la la la, this is a good time. And later I was like, oh, some people really work out how to score those points in the studio. You know, like the Guzzes and Morganas of the world are yeah. really good at being like, mm, give me some more points. <laughs> I think you might be right about the studio element of it, but I think there is no amount of revision you can do for the tasks in the house no, that, no. that will get over the fact that as soon as you're in front of Alex and the cameras are on and then the timer starts, everything just goes mad. Yeah, I you mean, will lose every thought. There's a moment later on, which we will talk about in this episode, episode three, uh, where you do the maddest thing I've ever... I think I've ever seen anyone do... <laughs> ever at uh, all it's one uh, of them it's one of them of just you completely losing your mind and doing so i mean you did it in episode one as well this is yes. why i was so excited to see you on the show desiree because there's there's different sorts of people who are booked for taskmaster that i'm always excited to see and uh there's someone like victoria who you think oh yeah. she's very good at one thing and i'm really looking forward to seeing this other side of her personality uh yes. where she's put in this situation but what i really like about you and your your act on stage as well is you really put it all out there like, it feels like you're just like, yes. hello, I'm Desiree. I'm going to talk about everything that's in my mind right now, yeah, which yeah. is why I was looking forward to you. Throw yourself into these tasks, which you absolutely have done every single episode so far. Thank um, you so much. That is an honor. I feel like there's a certain <laughs> amount of like, uh, you know, like the, the achieving the Zen of Taskmaster is to yeah. really fully live in that present moment and put things in your mouth when they don't belong there. <laughs> Let's talk briefly about episode one, first of all, and specifically the bursting the balloon task, which, I mean, you really hit the ground running. I, you... <laughs> I'm so proud of myself, I have to say. You should be. Because I failed spectacularly at that. But like, you know, when you go, you show up to a place and they've made you wait for an hour for to do the next task. And you're like, yeah. this must be big. And it was just coming out and being like, I immediately knew what the maths were. I was just like, the fastest way is to take the hit right up top, the eight minutes, yeah. take those scissors, pop it because you know yourself, you've never thrown anything accurately in your life. <laughs> you know, like there's so many things that can go wrong. And I knew, I just like, I was like, just use the scissors. And I was like, but they took all this time setting it up. And then the minute I use the scissors, I'm gonna turn back around and then wait another hour for the next task to be set up. So like, that's <laughs> not fun. Like, it's just not fun. So like, yeah. even at that one point when I like groaned about the scissors, I was like about to like give up. And I was like, no, you use anything but those scissors <laughs> until you are done. You have to throw your own eyeball, rip your nails out of your fingers and throw them at the balloon. You do that first. So yeah. Um, even though it was uh, like, it got stupid. And obviously what, it's all edited. Like it start, I was 30 minutes in and then it started to rain. <laughs> like it, it, it does that quite quickly on the show, but like I yeah. got, I know I had been stood out there for at least 20 or so minutes and then it started to rain and I was like, oh, of course, you know, like this is my shot shake moment or something. <laughs> it oh, was man. truly incredible. And that moment where you saw, you saw the switch flip where you're like, right, well, I can't do this quickly and with flair anymore, which is one way to be remembered in a task. Yeah. So I'm going to do this absolutely terribly in the most ridiculous way possible. It was the bucket of forks was that switch <laughs> flipping. Just going, <laughs> you, there were no more forks in the shop and you're just like, you're going to have to find me some more forks. I want a of bucket of forks <laughs> that, cost, that cost you an hour. <laughs> yep, best hour of my life spent <laughs> trying to throw Poundland forks poorly, mostly at the ground, and then throwing a bucket like at a wall and just, you know, ooh, if I could do that three days a week in a gym, it would be so fun. Also, to my credit, had those been like proper like for like John Lewis forks or something. I don't know if we can say that, but just with forks with some weight. You know how you get those pound yeah. forks and they're made out of like pretty much like aluminum foil. We've gotten a little bit of like, you know, welly on those forks. I think I yeah. could have done some damage. 
That's the problem. <laughs> Alex cheaped out on the forks. That was that yeah. was the main issue with that, Desiree. If Alex that had bought John Lewis issue. forks, you would have won the task, wouldn't you? <laughs> yes. I mean, other forks are available, but yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's get involved. Uh, let's start ch- chatting about the prize task uh, from Series 12, Episode 3. And as we go along, Desiree, feel, feel free to throw in some of your thoughts about, about your fellow, fellow contestants. That would be great. Yes. Um, so the prize task uh, for this week is the most old-fashioned thing that you still use. How did you feel about the prize task, Desiree? Is that something you enjoyed? That w- Yes. That I mean, that one... Yes, because I was kind of like, oh, okay, I think I could do fairly well at this. Now, I had hoped that um, basically when I moved into my flat, I went to an antique shop and I picked up a couple of things, that Shezlong being one of them. Um, The other one was an old school rotary phone that I wish that I could still use, but there is no modality to plug it into the walls of any modern home. Like I even looked online deep internet for a converter from old school (laughs) to anything digital. I still have not found it because that like in my heart of hearts, I would love to have a, one a landline you know and two with a rotary phone that like two people have the phone number two which is kind of akin to guz khan's uh you know prize yeah similar um, yeah which i was like actually i was like that's a pretty good contender right there because yeah. if you just have a regular <laughs> old ass phone which is kind of what i wanted but like you know that a p- few people have a phone number two brilliant um tip x like let's well let's let's go <laughs> let's go through them one by one let's talk about yours first of all okay let's talk okay. let's talk about the chaise long um the most old-fashioned thing that you still use i think this this was an excellent prize because and it was five points for good reason because you say you hadn't swatted up and revised how to do well in the studio to get the points yeah you got the five points here and i don't know if you knew this or whether it was just instincts the quickest way to Greg's heart is any prize that involves sitting down or having a rest. So- <laughs> I didn't know that, but I kind of, I think when you say that, something goes warm in my heart if this is true. Yes. <laughs> yes that, that Anything perfect- based on having a lovely rest or... Yes. Um, or like I brought in something once where it was had it was just full of mini eggs and he was like, oh yeah, brilliant, I love that. Just any sort yeah. of snacks or sitting down, he is all over that stuff. Um, wow. And also it's just... Very old fashioned and you do use it. So I, at no yeah. point was I suspicious that you didn't use that because it's a practical item. Yeah. You talked about guzzes. It's a good idea. It looked good. It instilled quite a lot of sort of nostalgia from the audience and uh, from Greg. Uh, Does he but actually I ha- use it? That's definitely a lie. There is no way <laughs> Guz Khan uses a 2010 Nokia. That he, that he cares around a totally separate phone that never goes off for, except yeah. for like three times a year. Absolutely no way that Guz uses that. (laughs) He's very active on social media. He's a very modern man. Yes, yes. That is, he's he's rooted through a drawer or ordered one off eBay. There's absolutely no way he still uses that. I'm calling him on that. And he's very easy to catch out in a lie. If Greg had said to him, do you use this? He would have smiled like a seven-year-old boy and said, no, I don't. (laughs) (laughs) He's very easy to catch out in a lie because he tells you. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, exactly. He just tells you straight away. Either yeah. in words or just his face. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so for, it was four points for that, amazingly. Um, yes, Victoria, the Tipex. What What did you think of the Tipex? Now, I mean, I... Interestingly, now that you've brought up the thing about Gus's phone, Victoria Corin Mitchell definitely uses Tipex. Yeah, <laughs> So I I feel like now I'm going, should she have gotten more points for that? Because the idea of Guz's phone is phenomenal. But the reality is that like he got half of the sort of like studio prizes out of a junk drawer in his house. It was just like, this thing is obviously the best thing for that. On Um, the other half were paintings that were sent to him. Um, (laughs) So so now I'm going thinking, you know, she does use that and it is quite old fashioned. Although Mm -hmm. I don't know... To me, the VCR is a little bit sexier as far as an old fashioned thing, because yeah. I only recently in the past couple of years of my life got rid of my VCR, even though I still currently have VHS 
tapes that I won't get rid of because yeah. I don't know. All of those films are available on the internet, like on yeah. so many different platforms. And yet I'm just like, oh, I want my copy of Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas with the messed up part. And I don't know why I haven't binned these things. Like, but there was something about that that just spoke to my heart because I kept a VCR for so long. Cause I was like, damn it, I've bought these movies. I'm not buying them again, you know? So <laughs> yeah, I, I when he brought that in, I was like, obviously if you have one, that's the first thing you go, yep. Cause he plays all of his old Jonathan Creeks on them, you know, and just- I, Again, I sincerely <laughs> doubt that I don't think <laughs> Alan watched Jonathan Creek when it was out the first time. I don't. Yeah. He absolutely doesn't smack of a comedian who loves watching himself on on TV. So, yeah. How can you tell? Do you like watching yourself on TV? Depends what it is. It honestly depends what it is. I've watched Taskmaster back. Yeah. Um, But. I don't that know. If feels... I was in John, I'd be very happy to be in Jonathan Creek. I'd probably watch myself back. I'd be quite excited about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that'd be. Pr- uh, but I guess, yeah. To me, I get. You're right. It d- does depend what it is. Something like Taskmaster, I'm absolutely gonna watch back. I think mostly because I know between all of us, there's really no pretense aside from the like, mm-hmm. you know, someone's personality shining through. You know, guys lying. Um, but like, <laughs> you know, there isn't. It's not like when you do a panel show where you go, "Oh, I could have done better on that joke," or "I could have yeah. done more of this and that," and you start you second guessing yourself. It's just literally like, "Yep, that's me." And like, <laughs> like I will say aloud the response that I'm about to say in the thing in real time again because there's no other response that I would have in doing yeah. or watching the thing. So yeah, a lot easier that way. But this all builds to the fact that I think Alan's lying and he doesn't use that VCR. <laughs> At all. Does he make no. his kids go, hey, re- remember what's paying the mortgage on the house over your head? And they're like, we yeah. don't care about this dad. I'm just trying to think of like what, how he has a, a wife and a family. Surely someone would have made him throw that VCR out unless yeah. it had like one use. Yeah. I mean, well, maybe the old sex tape is on there and that's the only reason it can't be ditched is because like there's only one copy on VHS that they want. Jonathan, Jonathan Crack. Copy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> um, you know, you were laughing. Somebody already made that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> Someone already made yeah. that back when that show was out. Yeah, for sure. Morgana's her nan her nan is wizard. <laughs> Yeah. Now, I, I God bless Morgana because that is a, that is that is a real deal. Holyfield little hand mixer. It is old as time. I grew yeah. up with one of those in my house. I use a hand mixer, although it's from like you know this century um, <laughs> when I'm baking stuff at home. But like, so I think that she just was like, oh, you know what? The story about my nan's gonna sell it because you know I'm so far away from my nan because we all forget that I'm from Australia and everybody's so far away and. Greg was having none of it. He was no. just like, nope, it's bad. <laughs> like, sometimes, did not work out that day. Sometimes Greg likes sentimentality, but mainly it's best to steer clear of it because the thing he likes more than sentimentality is giving sentimentality very low points. Like, I think and then he... while sitting on something else and eating cream eggs. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so if there's a chaise long on offer versus someone else's Nan's Wizard, it's always going to be the chaise long. I... I, since you have said this, I want nothing more than to see Greg Davis splayed out on that chaise long, eating cream eggs with just like a smile you could not slap off of his face because it comes yeah. so deeply from within his heart. I feel like the world needs to see that. <laughs> <laughs> Although, I mean, I'm sure we'll get some emails in. Yes, I know that Greg uh, hated Guz's uh, prize of a chair in a bag, but I think you could tell that was lazy. <laughs> It was lazy, but also lazy genius. Lazy yeah. and genius meet up at the other side of the circle. And the, if it had been a more comfortable chair, I yeah, think he would have yeah, gotten it. Maybe. Like, maybe if it actually brought a chair in rather than just one from his dressing room, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That, yeah. That one smacked of just did this five minutes before we went <laughs> on the record. <laughs> so it was one point for Victoria, two points for Morgana, three points for Alan, four points for Guz. And five points for you, Desiree. Still feels good. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I have brought.
brought in uh, my Shezlong, but now that I've moved to the UK, I've come to understand that there are various names. So I think this might actually be a fainting couch. Oh. That's not cool. Oh. That is nice. Yeah, I want to say it's from the 1920s-ish. At least that's what they told me when they charged me several hundred pounds for it. And you know, it's the kind of thing I can come home, unwind, just relax and think about how fabulous my life was that day and how even more fabulous it will be the next day. Yeah, it's lovely. It's a lovely item. And before it goes to its owner, but all back to you, I hope I get to have a little drape on it. I, I hope so too. I would like to personally see that and keep that in the old memory file. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever you want. <laughs> Task one, copy Alex. Alex will demonstrate his actions twice. Then you'll have one attempt to copy Alex. Closest copy wins. Scores based on timing, number of moves, order, and possible bang on bonuses. Maximum of 142 points to be won. I, lo I loved this task. I thought that was a great task. That was a great It looked very task. stressful to do. It would have stressed <laughs> me out to be involved in, but it's it's a really neat, simple idea, but so beautifully edited. And you could, the whole team did a brilliant job on that. I, I loved watching it back. Gosh, that was, I mean, it was really well. Uh, yeah, that was just really well orchestrated, conceived, executed, like put together by the yeah. team who make the show to like, because, you know, I, I mean, the dynamic in that room is obviously we're facing each other in this long, ominous corridor of deconsecrated but still very imposing church, um, <laughs> doing a dance move. And like, you know, I mean, Taskmaster elicits how many curse words, but then you're like, I'm in a church. And you're like, dip, dip, mm. so <laughs> I, you know, I don't know, like his little anagram of like things being Taskmaster, I wish I had remembered in doing half of the ta these tasks because it comes up. But um, like just trying to like, find a way for you to write down and remember like the timing and the whatever um because it's only two times like if this were choreography i get up and copy what was happening so i'd get mm -hmm. like a kinesthetic memory of doing it but when someone's like i'm gonna do it once i'm gonna do it twice and then you're gonna do it perfectly or suffer the consequences then you're just like yeah go back to like your sort of like how do i study for a thing and i was just like making furious notes that did not help in the end because i was like <laughs> what is it what does it say to do and it's like this is not how you study for a dance test desiree but um i was uh amazed at how like i was just like victoria core and mitchell just really nailed a dance wow, task, yeah. and that's not something that i was gonna genuinely <laughs> was gonna genuinely impressive beforehand. yeah but yeah, i yeah, guess yeah, yeah. I guess part of her huge intelligence is having amazing recall. Like I think, yes, yes. I guess that's all part of it, and being able to uh, work with sort of um, systems and uh, and yes. work with sequences as well. Only connects a huge, a huge thing yes. about only connected sequences. Yes. Um, so yeah, it's it is very exciting to see Victoria in her element doing something well because so far in the series that's not <laughs> happened a lot. I think from episode one. It was just like, okay, so okay, you miss, you know everything. Let's yeah. see about that. Yeah. And so, like, that's just the dynamic that it's just like, you know, you know who your arch nemesis is in the first five yeah. minutes of the film, and it just plays out. Um, so, yeah, I mean, God bless her because she was uh, strong enough to handle that role. I think the the ebb and the flow of that throughout, because obviously, so yeah. far, she's just been like, I don't you know what, I don't recognize your authority, but I think on the inside she's like, <laughs> I do a little bit, this is kind of painful. <laughs> but you did very, very well uh, as well, Desiree. Um, you, you smashed it and you did what I would do uh, at the start, which is start to panic out loud that you've missed some, something and then- As opposed keep to doing it? <laughs> as opposed to doing it, just going, oh no, oh God, oh no. <laughs> And then like commentator go, I missed that one. I missed that. Just commentating <laughs> yeah. on how badly it's going as you went went along, but still throwing yourself into it. You didn't let it drop, and you you shagged the hell out of that church. Yes, you I did. <laughs> <laughs> I let God know how grateful I was for the ability to thrust. I know when we get to that part, I'm going to nail it. <laughs> yeah, you, you remember that part, and you went for it. What I loved about it as well is earlier before they even showed your VT. Guz was talking about air shagging the church and how he didn't want to air shag the church. Uh, and and Greg was saying, yeah, that's a bit disrespectful. You shouldn't air, air shag the church. And you came in and went, well, no, you know, it was deconsecrated. So it's actually showing respect to God by doing that. And as soon as you did that, I thought, oh man, she air shagged the church so much. I can't wait to see it. <laughs> 
<laughs> really this defending is my the notion. This defense for yeah, what we're exactly. about to say. Because I almost got like like air on that air shag. Yeah. Like I levitated. And your face <laughs> lights up. It's amazing. You just really go for it. I mean, okay, so there's in my in my head, I know my own history and I know doing theater in high school, how many Shakespeare competitions I went to and double entendres were like, um, you know, uh, heavily physically referenced when guys would be like, yeah. the heads of their maidens or their maiden heads. And you're like, just say the joke. We don't need, like, we don't need to see the thrusting. Like I have there, I have a, like a clip show of teenage boys thrusting to show a thing and I'm just like, like the adult in me is like you never had sex in your life <laughs> <laughs> so I was so excited to be like I feel like a 15 year old boy yeah. doing Shakespeare <laughs> <laughs> thank you for elevating your air shagging to the level of Shakespeare there. that's right that's what we needed um no you did you did a really you did a really great job uh on that uh and Morgana also Sort of a little. I think the key with this a lot of the time was just confidence of just doing it and not and not going. Oh God, am I doing the wrong thing? Am I yeah. doing the right thing? And taking your time over it. So Morgana had a little bit of that, but then when she got to you know doing the arm snake and stuff, she she looks great doing it. She's absolutely hilarious. Did some incredible faces. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she really got lost in her own spell. Yeah, I yeah. think that. I mean the tasks that require confidence to master as opposed to just sort of like uh, uh, trying to fulfill the assignment, those confidence ones are ones that I would uh, just in life love to improve upon because the ones that just require yeah. you to go up be like, I know what I'm doing. Cause you just automatically do 30% better than you would normally do when mm -hmm. you walk into something and go, I know what I'm doing, even if you have absolutely no idea what you're doing. So like yeah. that was, you know, I mean, you know, Morgana, God, is amazing but let's be honest she was yeah. hung over that day yeah <laughs> <laughs> she's like i um, totally know what i'm doing what am i doing <laughs> guz uh i think this is what guz suffered from is he was not confident about it so it really didn't didn't go for it enough like he was stood yeah. up he was standing there at the top for quite a long time uh didn't quite know what he should have been doing so he he really held back even on the bits he did know about um, yeah, I had a feeling in his head. He was just like, why am I in this church? Like, what am I? Yeah. <laughs> like, this is, I don't even what know. Is this allowed? To? What's happening? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he really got in his own head about the religious thing, didn't he? Um, yeah. I mean, I, uh, I don't know. If I were in a mosque, I might be like, am I supposed to be doing this here? Are there rules? Should I even be, sure. you know? Like, so, yeah. yeah, deconsecrated or whatever you do to a mosque you're not using anymore and you've turned into a disco or something. Like, I don't know. I, want, I, okay. I wonder if there, there are any tweets this week of people going, would you air shag a mosque, Alex Horn? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, oh, my gosh. Look, the, and the only way to balance this is to have the task location... <laughs> Uh, yep, task exactly. location for the next series being a mosque and they've got to do every single possible uh <laughs> religious place of worship yep 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 a yeah. buddhist temple so we, we've got to now go to tibet to shoot one yeah. episode of the show <laughs> <laughs> amazing um and alan just couldn't give a shit <laughs> um, i mean he checked it he was like yeah, no. You know what I mean? He's like, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm Alan Davis. I don't need to do all yeah. of this. <laughs> but he is in the great, the great tradition of Taskmaster contestants who uh, don't care how they do, but in a very, very entertaining way. Um, yes, absolutely. He's, he's very relaxed. He's coming across so well, I think, in this series. Like even the music was over. He could hear that the music was over. So he knew he should be sat back down. He knew he'd gone completely wrong. And he so slowly pinged the elastic band into the bell. <laughs> Walk back to the chair, Doing. no rush whatsoever. Yeah, <laughs> and the dismount. Yeah, yeah exactly. It was the same God with the him. with the balloon in episode one. He he knew he had the scissors. He knew yeah. that he was it had to be quick, and he just tried the scissors out. Just tried the mechanism out for ages before he cut the rope. He's just in no he's in no rush. Yeah. And I love it. He had a good book to get back to. He was like, oh, yeah. this is it. Great. I'll see you guys in another hour. <laughs> <laughs> When when you got the thing with Taskmaster written down the side, Desiree, did you was there any inkling that that might be the order of moves? <laughs> no, not at all. I mean, I, I if I think back, perhaps because it was there on the page, but like I don't 
taking the time to try to figure out what yeah. the anagram meant meant that I mm-hmm. would lose at least a full try of writing down things. So at some, yeah. I think I immediately made a choice in my head of like, that doesn't mean anything to me because I'm going to have to come up with my own sort of verbiage for what I got to do anyway. So yeah. whatever. But then later, I don't know if that would have helped or not. I just, I would have needed like twice know. as many tries. I felt like this was just Alex doing a smart thing that he could reveal to. He had no intention of anyone spotting this. He was just he was being yeah. he was being smug no. because some like, of them are so obscure. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Art, Artie Snake. Artie Snake. Art, no. No magic way. Magic trick. Am I think sexy moves. Yeah. Yeah. No. No way. Right. So again, this is one of those. Um, this is one of those things where it's like, you know, I see why Greg really laces into this guy. Yeah. <laughs> I love Alex Horde with all my heart, but yeah. sometimes a little bit too clever. <laughs> Gonna get yeah. kicked in the shins. <laughs> because there are some things that sort of present themselves as a hack for a task, but in reality don't no. help in the slightest. Yeah. No, no, not at all. Um, so it was one point for Alan, uh, deservedly, two points for Guz, uh, three <laughs> points for Morgana, four points for you, Desiree, and five points for Victoria. Yeah. Thank God she got five points because yeah, let's this not forget. Checks out. She's come bottom every single episode. <laughs> yeah, so I feel like this was a well-deserved win for her and a good a good victory lap to take. There was an easy way of remembering all the moves because there were ten moves, oh. and each of them starts with a letter that spelled out Taskmaster. Mm-hmm. Ah. And also there's an easy rhyme, which they should have remembered. So it's tiptoe, ankle slapped, stop and shake, karate chops, magic trick, arty snake, sexy moves, toss up a treat, elastic band, return to seat. Mm. <laughs> <Quite easy. laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, I thought when I saw you before the show, you looked all excited about something. <laughs> now we know what, don't we? A lot of people will find that charming. Mm. Not this guy. <laughs> Task two, make the highest sandbridge across the river. You may not leave the lab. Your sandbridge must support the egg, and the egg must be able to pass under the sandbridge. There are two bonus points for the most extravagant sandbridge. You have 15 minutes. Your time starts now. I would have hated this. I'll say this for a kickoff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So totally not my sort of thing. Um, how did yeah. you feel about this uh, as soon as you... Well, okay. You, before you open the task, Desiree, let's, let's talk about this. So before you looked at the task, which classically describes everything that's in front of you yeah. and tells yeah. you what you have to do, you walked into the room, first thing you did, dipped your finger in the sand, <laughs> ate some of the sand. It. Yep, just check it. I don't. Okay, so I don't. I don't know what to say for myself. I have. I have many explanations that will never come near the truth. I think the truth is that uh, I am. Uh, I will. I will say with all grace and love to myself that I am a fat kid at heart that will <laughs> discover the world through my mouth before anything else. So I saw a bucket. And I was just like, I mean, there was all kinds of things going on. It looked like a big bucket of brown sugar, but it was also like that loosely compacted sand. It isn't like beach sand. It's like that construction sand that's sort of like loose and fluffy. And I could make an excuse about like, well, the chemical composition would be important because if I add water to sugar, I'm just going to get like, you know, sweet water and that's not going to build anything. So I need to know what this substance is. But underneath that is a real truth of like, I just want to put things in my mouth in order to know them with my heart. And so I saw that and it looked like a big bucket of sand or sugar. And I was like, sure shot way of figuring this out. Like Desiree, just pick up the thing with the task. But Open the task, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but also sometimes you like to think like, oh, if I can figure things out before I pick up the task, then I get some kind of leg up, then I'm ahead. Mm. But what I figured out is that sand t- tastes dirty. I, I, even though it was clean <laughs> sand, I just was like, oh, for like the rest of the task because it was still in my mouth. Yeah, of course, mouthful of sand. Um, (laughs) The thing is, what, okay, what I would have, interestingly, you made a point there that that is is quite fascinating. I I think you always read the task first and then when it says sand, then have a look at that, realise that's probably sand, you didn't need to eat it. But there was a task in, in the last series uh, where it was, you were supposed to, I think you were supposed to move the salt. You were supposed to get salt around, but mm. it turns out that everyone was picking up the one in front of them, which was actually sugar. Yeah. Uh, and only one of the, one of the teams discovered it was sugar by tasting it. I don't, I don't think they would do that two series in a row. And they certainly, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no. 
But there was something in my head that was just like, figure out what this is right now. Because, you know, mm. you just get into that house and you go, everything is a trick. Like, yeah. everything's a lie. Everything you know is wrong. Like, yeah. you know, and it's not. And part of the part of doing Taskmaster is knowing when it's a trick and when it's just like, just do the flipping thing. You know, yeah. like that's all, just do the task. So, um, because sometimes like I, I, now having watched it, I see how far ahead some people get it but just by being like, I'm not gonna do what any of this says. I'm gonna do my own thing and then yeah. make it that thing. And then Greg goes, ha ha, clever. And I'm like, wait a second, those aren't the rules, you know? And that's the problem when you have like head girl trying to play this game, following yeah. the rules. So I thought I was gonna get a little ahead by being like, like I'm a cop in the eighties. What's this substance? Uh, yeah. uh, Oh, it's sand. Yeah, yeah, so I didn't... It, it, yeah, yeah, you were I, just a, a policeman rubbing it on your gums. <laughs> That's good sand. That's good yeah, sand, actually. It's just yeah, just pure uncut Colombian <laughs> sand. <laughs> uh, amazing. Um, now, but, you know, pretty decent sand bridge, I thought. I thought you did a good job. Um, in the end, we got there. In the end, in the end you I got there in the end. I still wonder... Is there a right answer to this? Even though in some ways Morgana got quite close. See, that's the thing about, I didn't, had I been aware, like that table, that table is a total lie. And that table has all kinds of things in it, under it. Yeah. And that was one of those things that if I had probably watched previous series, I could have been hip to like, oh, the table. I don't know if they've used, they must've used that table before for well, like hidden things, you know. This, this reminded me of a task in series two. Um, where they had to build a bridge, I believe it was quite similar, uh, um, uh-huh. and there was there was stuff under the table, I think. Yes. Um, so I, yeah, there's it's always worth looking in that scenario, but it just does something to your brain. I don't think I don't think I would have looked. Um, yeah, with Guz, all that stuff on the table, you're just like, okay, well, this yeah. is it. I felt Guz was very harshly treated by Greg here. Um, yeah, because yeah, he, I would agree with that. Look. I enjoyed Greg's analogy about going to the fourth bridge, covering it in jam. Would you say it's the jam bridge? But then Morgana finds all that stuff <clears throat> and gets and gets four points. And that's there's less sand on her bridge than there is on Guz's. That's actually true. Now, uh, co- correct me if I'm wrong. Wait a second. We got the egg underneath Guz's bridge, right? Yeah, because he pushed he pushed the egg through. He birthed he pushed the, the egg. egg through. So yeah. so it is a bridge. If the egg can go under it and on top of it, yeah. it is a bridge. And it did have more sand on it. I yeah. you know sometimes one wonders how much Greg's just gotten tired of one of his wayward children <laughs> and has decided yeah. to like offload on them that day. And I think that's yeah. what happened here. That he was just like you know Gus Khan, like I'm so sick of you being so charming and cunning. Yeah. All of your ex, you know what? Today's just not your day. It's just not your day. And then the next day will be your day, but not today. And I think that's you know, what was, happened. I think that's what happened. And there were some lovely touches from uh, from Guz. He, you know, there, there was a raven for the bl- blood clot egg, he said. Uh, he, put, he, popped <laughs> yes, the, he went, and there's a raven egg. for your blood clot egg. So it was a lo- <laughs> some lovely little flourishes from him. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. But it but was they exciting. they were mostly linguistic flourishes that would not sure. be there should someone <laughs> choose to pass over said bridge later that evening. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you wouldn't go, there's the blood clot egg. You'd have to, oh, you'd oh have yes. Lo and behold, the blood clot egg. <laughs> um, it was exciting that someone discovered the secret stash uh, of materials though but i do yeah. i do wonder whether morgana might have been the last one to do the task as no one had discovered it so far yeah. cuz there was a li- there was a little bit of guidance from alex of as like, to what, what a, that what, meant what what about helen of troy what what happened <laughs> there this is a, just 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 open the table up <laughs> Like, yeah, I think, <laughs> she, I think you're yeah, absolutely Troy, do you remember correct. the uh, the the myth of Troy where there's a load of stuff in a table? They pull the side off the table, just do that. <laughs> <laughs> and inside, it's a bunch of Trojan warriors <laughs> that make a bridge. Clearly, um, I this is one of those tasks though that I still go, you know, because um, I'm I'm so new, I'm still new to this world relatively, and I just go. Was there a correct answer for this? Like, I know part of the answer was open the table up, mm-hmm. but like, 
what could Morgana have done to her bridge to make it sandy enough to fulfill the requirement? Because it was certainly like elaborate and, and yeah. sort of ostentatious. It was definitely like, oh, if 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 I went to a city in the middle of America that was good for nothing except for it had this huge bridge that looked like this like clown bridge, I would go and see the clown bridge in yeah. you know Oklahoma or wherever, right? So what? could she have done to that bridge to make it sandy enough to get five points is w what I wonder. Well, I I think the materials in the table were actually a bit of a red herring. Yeah, so I don't think see? she should have been, she should have been scored as highly as that. I, I think Alan, Alan absolutely deserved the five points. Yes, he didn't necessarily he... deserve the extravagance points. I think that mm. should have gone to Morgana. No. I think if he'd um, used some of those little rainbow bits coming out, if he had put a rainbow yeah. on top of what he made, he would have yeah. gotten like six points. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, he did get six. So they got, they both oh, got an extravagance right. point, but I don't oh, think he deserved right. that. Whatever. Um, he would have gotten 12. What, yeah, what's a yeah. high enough number to still be in the world of the show? <laughs> <laughs> um, but he did. He just went for it. was very straightforward and built a good sand bridge. And you know what? I was very proud of him. Yes. Well, you know, it's important to know when to give up on your initial plan to not have that cognitive dissonance of, of like, mm -hmm. I need to stick with this plan, but to go, you know what? Let's smush it together. Yeah. <laughs> let's just go. Let's just start all over and just big yeah. one big smush and then drill through the smush, you know? And the thing is, he wasn't doing that out of anger. So that's something I do out of anger and panic. He's just He's, so chilled out. Yeah. He was like, discovery. Yeah. I yeah. guess. I don't know. I would love to get to a certain Alan Davies level of Zen in my yeah. life about doing things where it's like, there's no need to rush. You yeah. know, it all ends in the same dirt nap for everybody. So I'm going to take a sweet time, do it how I'm going to do it. <laughs> Stand in a bathtub, you know? <laughs> um, I would have, I mean, I, I think she changed her mind about the plan, but Victoria's Bridge when she initially was going to just build it out of paper and try and argue that the locals refer to it as Sand Bridge. Um, would have been a point I would have loved to see her argue properly with Greg. I really yep. like that idea of... <laughs> yeah, if she had put it up and also like, you know, she had maybe just taken the time, she could have ripped off a corner, written sand bridge and put yep. that just next to the bridge. Yeah. And and I would have loved to have seen the um, legal precedent uh, argument take place on Twitter after the show about legally, would this be referred to as the sand bridge or not? Yeah. Despite its components. I mean... I, I think you can do she... it, right? I think you yeah. can do it because you, you can say that the town is called Sand. You could put up a sign yep. saying welcome to Sand and then that would be the yes. Sand Bridge. Because yep. Waterloo, right, it's named after the place. It's not made of waters and loos. Loos, yeah. <laughs> just just really clogged loos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just overflowing everywhere. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I guess I was just... Sometimes when Victoria and I are in the same company on a task, I just go... Phew, because I <laughs> didn't know what I was doing, but as long as I'm there with someone I know is demonstrably brilliant, then yeah. I go, well, we both thought we had an idea. Like, I guess I thought in my head before I started that, I was like, I'm going to make all these little sand houses and I'm going to connect them using architecture, knowing about bridge support and the structure yeah. needing to come together at the center. And then I was like, no, I'm not. It's flipping wet sand and it's going to fall yeah. apart immediately <laughs> upon contact with any other solid object. It's very interesting the thing you say about is there a right answer and you're still thinking is there one right answer and I don't think there is for this one. Um, I I would have panicked and tried to find a hack and my only thought was to crack the egg and mix it with the sand. Oh so then my gosh, that's genius! The, How the bridge long itself is always supporting the egg because it's it, yes. it, the, the egg is within the bridge. The bridge. Does the egg support the bridge? Does the bridge support bridge the egg? Support the egg. Like, how classic what is philosophical question? Yeah, yeah, that that would have taken up a lot of good studio time and created <laughs> fun little argument for everyone. So that's brilliant. Now, do you think that would have worked on sand? I know that like egg makes things like it works on meatloaf, but yeah. like. <laughs> Does... Yeah, it does bind it together. I mean, obviously, I would have tried the sand to check to see if it was mince beforehand. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But then I guess, but if you crack the egg as well cr and crush up the shell, it, you can have a smaller hole at the bottom for it to pass through because it, it wouldn't true. take much for that to pass That's through. That's true. 
It would yeah. look. I would have panicked. I would have cracked the egg and then tried to uh, argue it in the studio. That's always the yeah. most fun thing to do. Yeah. Wow, you really know the game that you're playing. It's gonna make. <laughs> yeah, but I still would, that would have been one point. Night. You say that would have been a big <laughs> argument in the studio and taken up loads of time. It would have done on the night, and then the edit would have been. Well, I cracked the egg and mixed it with the sand. One point to you, Ed. That's what it would have been. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, but there was a whole like dynamic struggle there was a three arc process yeah, yeah. to the whole story of doing this yep one point <laughs> when the film which is sort of just that's very sandy strengthen the foundations with some rainbows and i think he's going to be quite welcoming you've got 40 seconds yeah yeah i'd live here oh, yeah right Oh, the highest. <gasps> no, 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 no. You've got two seconds. You have to let go of your bridge. I don't. Well, you do. <laughs> I'm going to propose this to the council and see if I can get some funding. <laughs> Task three. Film the most thrilling 30-second sequence wearing the welly cam. You have 30 minutes. Your time starts. Now, uh, presumably, Desiree, they edited out the bit where you walked into the room, licked the welly to check that it wasn't chocolate. <laughs> I thought it was a shoe. Licked the bottom <laughs> of it just to make sure that it was m- new for me. Um, yes, they definitely licked the camera and then they had to clean that as well. Um, yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. Now, okay, this one I actually didn't, you know, I mean, this is one of those that you don't know how well you're going to do, obviously, until you're in the studio. But um, I realized after, immediately after giving my explanation for the making of my film, that that was not indeed the explanation. It, It had to do with something a lot more subliminal like you know when he was like oh yeah those ducks are genuinely scary i was like i think what i'm drawing from are recurring nightmares because you know i do have like recurring nightmares of my home my childhood home being invaded by whatever baddie of the day it is it used to be vampires now it's zombies because we're more in a zombie area era of time but like i have a very like I'm like, oh, I'm having this dream. And it's just like, I always get waylaid on locking all the windows and all the doors. And I always get to the garage. I don't know why it does, or you just go to the garage first. I always get to the garage and that's the last door. And they're already starting to come in that door. And that's when it's like, you know, oh no. And I have to start fighting and then blackout. Like I immediately wake up afterwards because I'm just like, I don't know how to deal with this. I lose this every time. So I think in the making of that, it was just about having, just feeling encroached upon, you know, and like using the stop motion to do that. Actually uh, harnessing the reality of my inner childhood turmoil uh, proved to be a good point for that. I didn't, I'm very into Guz's version. (laughs) Hang on, have you, this dream, this dream, these dreams. Yes. Since you did the task, have you had another one of those dreams or? Have you fully exercised that now? The think? dream because of having done the task. You're right. I haven't had, I mean, I haven't. So, you know, you that never know if a recurring dream it. is gone forever, do you? Yeah. You know, you just until, have until to you're die. De- until you're dead, I guess. Yeah. 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 Until the vampires <laughs> finally get in and they're like, this is the end. And they're vampire ducks, which yeah. these could have definitely been. Um, I thought yours yeah, was I, great. Yeah. I, I think it was so good. I think it totally deserved the five points. I really liked it. Genuinely quite scary at times, as opposed to Morgana's, who's, I also loved Morgana's, but it didn't have that edge of being quite scary. It was more, it was, it was silly. It was a silly silly By the time story. a ghost is taking a dump, I'm suddenly yeah. like, wait a second, <laughs> this is the downstairs loo, no poos. <laughs> you know, I was just, no, it, it was something about seeing the, um, the, the ghost on the loo. And I was just like, okay, this is now yeah. a children's story. That's very cute. Yeah. Um, I am not, I, it was thrilling, maybe. I don't yeah. know. No, I don't know if it was thrilling. For, I would say, um, Victoria's, which was a little bit more action. Like, you We're know. going to get to Victoria's. He did say so sort angry. of action-packed, right? So in some ways, she did fulfill that when we all kind of went more horror, thriller direction. Um, so, Well, yeah, it was most thr- most thrilling. Most thrilling was the... Um, True. was the on the task so yeah now, i guess an action movie being retold in stop motion not even animation but just stop motion drawing isn't as thrilling as an actual we, bond film right yeah quickly want to say about yours and morgana's the only thing that spoiled the tension for me was the fact that because you were walking wearing the whirly cap yes Yes. It, you or you both had to limp like it, a pirate yeah pretty much that's the thing you don't like 
I mean, unless you hop like a bunny down yeah. the hallway, I don't know how to get, yeah. I was like, I was watching Morgana, so I was like, yeah, you know, this like peg leg motion isn't really good. And then we got to mine, I was like, oh yeah, it's gonna be the exact same thing, Desiree, because the cam is on one welly. Oh man. I, I don't think it took away from it too much. I think they were they were both great and deserved to be at the, the top of the table. Um, now, Victoria's was, I'm sorry, how did she get three points for this? This, it was... <laughs> It was dreadful because because, because there were um, uh, bombs, uh, explosives, and diamonds inside of that cat. Because they, they were, the baddie no, showed up were... with a cat on a lead, and people were like, "You know what? I think that that is a twist that a bomb film has not taken yet." Yeah, and a, a, cat, another yes, twist, that, on another a lead? twist, a Bond film hasn't taken is doing it all through the medium of shit drawings. <laughs> You'd like to think that if she's gonna do that. She's great at drawing. <laughs> yeah. Some effort. Some. It's not even that she's bad at drawing. She'd made no effort with the drawing. She's literally just scribbled them on there. And then even the way she was commentating on it, she was like, yeah, all right, that, and then that happens, and then that happens, and then that happens, and then that's the end of my film. It was so lazy. It was so bad. <laughs> It was. It showed a bit of disdain for the uh, the, the the task. Just a little itself. bit. It was yeah. just like, really, I, I don't have time for this. Do you understand who yeah. I am? <laughs> <laughs> and that's fair. Look, look, that's fair. She's a, she's a national treasure. So yes. you know, yes. Why should she be doing this welly cam nonsense? But for, <laughs> I felt bad for Guz that he got the same amount of points as her because yes, his he was did. inventive. He yes. did. He had a story. I'd never seen anything like it before. Uh, a, you know, a Wild West movie in the West Country. It was a Wild I West Country movie. I didn't even know. That was, I mean, that was a bit of genius and I think actually deserves some recognition for what it was. I don't, mm. like, I guess I'm the only person who, watching it who doesn't know about the West Country accent and the, you are. Uh, <laughs> I don't, I still, to this day, I'm just like, I don't even understand what that is. But he, you know, took taking in what Westerns were, which were, you know, started as spaghetti Westerns made by Italian directors, you know, about this fantasy about the American West and yeah. like him being from Coventry and having a fantasy about the West Country and it's a new version of a Western. But like, didn't he say you are and then like Ooh. blood clot again or something like that? <laughs> I can't Ooh, it was who are, who are you blood? Um, who are you? It, yeah, who are you blood? That's what it was. So, <laughs> like that, that to me is, I don't know, like that's gonna be, I feel like if when he's sitting on like the Tonight Show, like I want them to show that clip of his work. <laughs> <laughs> rather than rather than the Hollywood film Whatever he's film currently he's promoting in. at yeah. the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, Imagine if he goes for an interview about, I think he's in a Zack Snyder film that's coming out quite soon. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. He goes on The Tonight Show and they show, who are you, who are you blood? <laughs> who are you, blood? And I was like, well, some of your early experimental film work is actually quite inventive. <laughs> I think we have a clip. <laughs> And then, and then on the Tonight Show, they should show Victoria's one and go. That's and that's the same amount of points. How do you feel about that? That that uh, yeah. You say this, but we're gonna see a bomb film with an exploding cat on a lead in like three I'm years. Sure. They're gonna be I'm like, sure yeah, nobody will. remembers that. Yoink. <laughs> um, just the three points for Guz, and then look, I, I I feel like Guz deserves three. I think three points was good. The three, four, five. I I agree with Victoria should have been one. And then Alan's happily at two because this is not, this is not a man who's focused on the task. This is a man <laughs> having a breakdown. This is a man who has had to spend a lot of time fully clothed in a bad bathtub, entertaining <laughs> young people, and went with that. Just, um, want, for, just I, want you to clarify, you mean his children, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> sorry. You know, when you're a dirty person in general as a comedian, you don't realize how many dirty things you say that you thought were innocent because your mouth doesn't know how to wrap itself around any other yeah. ideas or thoughts. Yeah. So that, I in my head, I was just like, yes, he's entertaining children. And now yeah. like, uh, we've got to have to call in the local authorities yeah. kind of situation. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So what exactly, how, like... So it was him and Victoria. Like, Cthulhu showed up at some point, I think. Yeah. <laughs> to like save the day Again, I felt Evil like Ducks. he started doing it and didn't know what the story was or where it was going and just it was like a kid playing with action figures yes um, where <laughs> oh no no an octopus comes in oh no ah, uh, oh I'm dead I'm dead, dead. yeah, yeah. 
Um, and poor Victoria only finding out in the studio that she was part of this, that there was like a voodoo doll of herself <laughs> that had been like, Wait, drowned that in me, a bath. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I'm dead now. Yes, you died of drowning. <laughs> yeah, he had an absolute meltdown. Um, no idea what he was doing. But again, Do- very chilled out about it. Yeah, do we feel like had we only seen what the welly cam was filming and not what the crew were snickering at, <laughs> that he that we would have thought differently about his film? <laughs> because Maybe. the I, wide yeah. angle does do a lot to discredit anyone. It totally does. But you you had to show that there. It was him splash, splashing around. <laughs> Yeah, yes, yes. Bar. He was in a bathtub playing with action figures like he was five. Only he's yeah. like, I get to be in my jeans this time because mom never let me do that. No <laughs> shoes in the tub. I'll show you. <laughs> um, lovely, lovely stuff for, uh, from Alan, um, but absolutely deserves the two points. Uh, so yeah. it, was, uh, it was two points for Alan, three points for Cousin Victoria, four points for Morgana, and five points for you, Desiree. Extremely strong episode. Right. And it throws up that age-old quandary. Was it creative or was it lazy? <laughs> <laughs> lazy? I... The, the, the creative process is in here. Yeah. Not stomp, stomp, stomp through the garden. Mm. It's the first time your authority's not worked on me. <laughs> <laughs> um, I enjoy the idea in a Bond film that the villain might store nuclear weapons inside a cat. What's the sort of thing they do? I've, it's, I... it, it, <laughs> it, it's not the sort of thing they do. Yes, and they... I think I, I, if they did do that, honestly, I think it would be the end of the franchise. <laughs> <laughs> Live task. Uh, correctly guess your teammate's object. Your teammate will represent their object through the medium of shadows uh, on the screen. Fastest correct guess wins two actual points per round. Um, so this is... A lovely use of a shadow screen. Yeah, I mean, and I, this is a brilliant, beautiful use of a shadow screen, a gorgeous shadow screen. And I do have to give uh, Guz Khan a lot of credit for his diligence and patience. He, like, <laughs> you know, Victoria was screaming out things and he was just like, <laughs> nope, I'm going to accurately cut out this tank with all yeah. its wheels and its long little pokey thing because all we will need is one look at this to yeah. know exactly what it is you know it was and he very good yeah that was brilliant because yeah he just he spent all the time and it was worth it absolutely yeah that was certainly the, the, the strongest one i think um and victoria really does just keep shouting guesses when and now in retrospect looking at you know because i was focusing on guz and then i was like well, is he going to turn around at any point because i got to be ready um i mean obviously that's a dragon I, the bird of peace <laughs> the bird of peace is vomiting. I never, yeah. They're like, this is, you're making this so much harder. <laughs> but what, you had a similar vibe in that game, Desiree, uh, which yeah. I really liked. You could tell how competitive you are in this game um, because at one, at one point you got the right answer. You got Worm. Yeah. Um, Morgana signaled that you got the right answer. Alex said you'd got the right answer and you kept guessing like it was catchphrase. You were going, Worm. Someone <laughs> went, you got the right answer. You go, the early bird catches the worm. <laughs> Just in case, yeah. this is the eating the sand version of playing yeah. this game. Because yeah. <laughs> I, there's no extra credit unless you, you know, I don't know, I denigrate Alex, clearly. But yeah. I, I was just kind of like, you. it can't just be as easy as a worm. I, is it Art, Artie Snake? What are we doing yeah. this time around? Yeah. So um, you got the right answer and then gave what you thought should have been the right answer. If they yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, that yeah. was clearly way too, it can't just be worm. Also, if we're ever playing charades or anything remotely close to this game, always have me guessing. I'm yeah. way better at guessing than I am at doing the thing. Just have <laughs> me guess. I will throw the kitchen sink at this job. Well, you you did that at every task in this episode, and I do think you've struck upon a new phrase there. Uh, so now on the Taskmaster podcast, whenever uh, any contestant really throws himself enthusiastically into a task too much immediately, we're going to say that they've really eaten the sand on that one. <laughs> we're gonna say they've really eaten the sand on this task i really did eat the sand on this. <laughs> is, is that like biting the dust no it's entirely different <laughs> you may indeed bite the dust at the end but if you start yeah. by ending the sand eating the sand i mean yeah um so victoria and alan got two points uh uh you morgana and guz got four points 
Um, so final points, um, 21 points for you, 18 points for Morgana. Guz got 14, Alan got 14, Victoria got 13, her third last place in a row, every episode. Uh, and a brilliant victory for you. Uh, so you're out in front in the series at the moment by five points, but it's still early days and Morgana's quite close behind you there. Yeah, um, she is. And then everyone she... else lagging a little bit. Um, yeah, she's uh, she she eats up points. She really gets in there. I I know, yeah. and I love her with all my heart. But I'm like, oh, you are you're an assassin. I see. You're coming I for me. You yeah, yeah, yeah. She eats the, she eats the sand on a few tasks as well. Actually, <laughs> to be fair to her. We have a few emails uh, from listeners, uh, Desiree. Um, okay. We got a lot. We get a lot of emails on the Taskmaster podcast from the states, anyway. Oh, um, which is the, it's you know I'm very happy to receive them, but it's, it's always quite weird. It seems to have really, uh, really, um, it really connected has with people caught in the on there, and I don't understand because there are people who are ravenously devouring it there, and at the same time, everyone is on my Instagram feed going, "Where do I watch this in America?" And I'm like, yeah. I don't know. Talk to the other fans. <laughs> Go on the internet and ask them. They will tell you because yes. they're all watching it. I have no idea where yeah. they're finding it, but yeah. Well, we um. We got a few emails in on the same on the same note, really. But let's read this one. Uh, uh, hello, Ed and Desiree. Huge fan of you both. I have a question for Desiree for the podcast. What's it like being the only American in the group? Taskmaster has such strong British energy, and I just wondered what it must be like. That's from Corey uh, in Connecticut. Oh, hi, Corey in Connecticut. Well, I will say that I... Because I've been doing so much just sort of like comedy TV, other things here, being like I have grown accustomed to being the only an American in the group. What it means is that you're often laughing at things that you have no idea have any basis <laughs> in any form of reality. Everyone's like, oh, it's kind of like when so-and-so did such and such on this show from a decade ago. And everyone's like, hilarious, amazing reference. And you're like, ah, what? So that happened quite frequently of like, there's a lot of me. I mean, I laugh a lot anyway, but there's a lot of me laughing extra loud to be like, that was probably an important thing from the 90s that I should have known. Yeah. And I don't. <laughs> So, so just to let any British comic who's listening to this know, if you've ever made Desiree laugh, she's probably not doing it because she finds you funny. Yeah. She, she's, she's probably like, just doing I have it to, to Google join. this later. Yeah. <laughs> she's assimilating. <laughs> she's like, ha, 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 furiously typing in her notes app what she's got to find out for the future. So that is, I think, the only thing that makes me feel like a little bit sort of out. Other than that, it's still the same thing of like, you're still doing the task, you know, you're still being judged and you're like, I mean... Like the episode two one, I think that was a distinctly, I only in watching it back did I realize how American I was on this show because everybody was like, yeah, I'm going to have Bovril and like, you know, whatever else. And that's fine. Yeah. This is yeah. acceptable. You know, this is why, why wouldn't you ask me to identify this? And I was like, what the hell is wrong with you people? How does any of this count as food? Like... <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you you guessed, and you I guessed eaten oat- the sand. <laughs> the you sand oat- oat was better than most yeah. of those things that yeah. I put in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> um, we also we had a similar email from David in Pennsylvania, who uh, who asked another question. Really, uh, does the difference in perspective give you any competitive advantages or disadvantages? Um, I think that. Uh, there might be a bit of an advantage in that sometimes my cultural references may be um, a little left field and so they might appear novel. You mm-hmm. know, I, I'm trying to think if, if there's like a good example of that. I mean, there's so many times when people are like, oh, that's really clever. Like not even on the show, just in life. And I'm just like, that's just like a saying. Like I've just said yeah. a thing that Americans say, but it sounds clever to you. Just like many British sayings are like, oh, I've never heard that. And that sounds really funny. It's like, yeah, we've been saying that for a thousand years. So that might, um, I haven't noticed that it's given me any particular advantage or disadvantage aside from being just sort of a bit novel. And like yeah. people are, have a tendency to be like, oh, okay, well, you don't know what's going on. So, you know, you're just having a good time. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know what's going on, which is half true. But also I should use that to my advantage a lot more and just be like, I have no idea. I have studied this intently. Um, Those turns of phrase, I've definitely noticed adding 
something distinctly uh, different to Taskmaster, and re- it's being really exciting when like you you exclaim something that is so natural to you being yeah. American. Yeah. And then it's so different to everything. We're all like, this has been like 11 series of people going, oh no, I've dropped my trilby in the pudding. And and then there's <laughs> there's some of the phrases that you come out with as re- really stand out and are absolutely brilliant. Um, <laughs> we all remember What's a the trilby. The- do hat. I need to go into my notes app right now and just like, ah, yes, trilby but, in the pudding, yes, Ed. What? But thank you, for, thank you for laughing at that, as you proved your own point. <laughs> I mean, the general idea is that it's a thing I don't understand. That is very true. Um, this is from Meg, um, and this look, she's from New York. These are all American emails this week. Uh, Dear Ed and Desiree, in the balloon pop task, uh, it says you may buy things from Alex's store. Do you think it would be within the rules to use other items? My first thought was untying the string or cutting it with something sharp. Uh, on For free. the Dan- On the Danish Taskmaster, there was a contestant that used his pocket knife in a live task. <laughs> uh, by Series 12, I would expect at least one person to carry a multi-tool. It might not be yeah. in the spirit of the task, but I always enjoy uh, when people skate around the rules. Um, that's from Meg. Now, what I would say, Meg, is I think, I mean, this is just me dredging my memory, I think there was something within the tar- the balloon task that you weren't allowed to touch the string with anything else other than the scissors. So I think mm. Alex might have thought ahead with that, potentially. Okay, good. That was smart, because when Meg said that, I was like, why wasn't I gnawing on that <laughs> with my two little beaver teeth? Like, ah, oh, it's going to be so worth it. It was too late by then, Desiree. You bought a bucket of forks. There was no point. <laughs> Oh, fuck it. I mean, and what a deal. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's interesting, yeah, using other, carrying a multi-tool. I feel like they might dissuade you from doing that because then you would just use it for every task. It might be so boring. It's like, well, let's, this, let's see what Desiree did with her Swiss Army knife now. <laughs> post-apocalyptic version of Taskmaster yeah. where people just walk in, stab the task, and leave the room. <laughs> and they're like, how many points is that, Greg? <laughs> Um, Desiree, thank you so much uh, for coming on the Taskmaster podcast. Uh, you've been brilliant, of course. Uh, now, uh, thank you. I just ask you, as I ask all of our guests, to rate your experience on the podcast between one and five points in the style of the Taskmaster. Don't feel pressured to give it five. You give it however, however you I, feel. Here's what I'll say. Um, so as far as rating podcasts, five out of five. Mm, four and a half out of five for preparation. I did have to watch the episode, but then I was mm-hmm. going to do it anyway because I love not having to prepare for a task. Of course. Um, I would give the fact that I've had to close all of my windows and I'm sweating <laughs> uh, inside of the room I'm recording in a one. Um, I will give the sort of dynamic uh, of you uh, as a great host. I would definitely give that a five. Um, I would um, I would give uh, twiddle in the pudding. What is that a thing? Uh, a trill, trillby in the pudding, yeah. A trillby in the pudding. Um, I, that or a twiddle, was a, if you like. Uh, <laughs> neither of them do I understand. I would definitely give that a four. Um, so I, I feel like I'm, I haven't done the mass on this. That one on me sweating is going to really draw things down. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and say that we're gonna come to a round of four total on the podcast simply cool. because you could not be in control of the humidity today. Yes. And no, fair that enough. Was a, yeah. an issue. So it would, have been a, mm. it would have been a five, Bonus but you're warm. Bonus point, though, for coming up with a... Wait, say that again? It would have been a five, but you're warm. Is but I'm warm, and, yeah, I, yeah. and I hate being warm, so that goes down. <laughs> However, I did say it was a floor, but bonus point uh, for allowing me to have come up with a catchphrase, which is uh, eating the sand. Yeah. So, yeah, now that I'm part of the lexicon, we're back yes. up at a five. Totally. Well, that's good to hear. That that catchphrase will genuinely last. I will use that every time, every time I need to. Will um, you also use trilby in the pudding, please? I will try at some point. I feel like that might have less practical application. Than... God, Desiree, amazing. thank you so much for coming on the podcast. We look forward to seeing what you do on the rest of the series. Oh, same, same. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Bye-bye. There we are. Thank you very much to Desiree for coming on. Absolutely wonderful, as Desiree always is. She's brilliant on the show. She was brilliant on the podcast. Hopefully we'll we'll get her back back on one day. 
I'd love to chat to Desiree again. Um, so remember, keep watching Taskmaster, Series 12, Channel 4, every Thursday at 9pm. Catch up on all four if you miss it, but you shouldn't be missing it, really, should you? Call yourself a fan, it's disgusting. And keep listening to the podcast. We drop an episode straight after the episodes go out on Channel 4, so at 10pm. Check your podcast apps, and we'll be there, ready to chat about what we've just seen. Next week's special guest is Victoria Corrin Mitchell. Yes, Victoria Corrin Mitchell. From the show and from everything, you know Victoria Corin Mitchell. She's brilliant on this series of Taskmaster. I can't wait to chat to her. I say that. I've actually already talked to her. We've already recorded it. So there's no point emailing any more questions in for Victoria. But if you have any more general questions for future possible guests, I'd say it's probably good to get your questions in now. Taskmasterpodcast.gmail.com. Uh, you can get in your questions for maybe some guests we haven't had yet, some people on this series who we haven't spoken to yet, or general questions about Taskmaster. We will do our best to answer them for now. Thank you very much. See you next week. Keep on tasking. Who are? Who are? Who are? Who are? <laughs> now, who are you, blood? <laughs> who are you, blood? Who are? Uh. Who are? Uh. Who are? For more Taskmaster, subscribe now.